Okay, so here is your second level four portion of your notes. We're going to jump right into it. We want to find the area of the shaded region created by the squares. So these are all squares. Um, these two shapes are squares. What we're going to do is we're going to find the area of this large square doing your length times your width of that square. To find the area of just the shaded part, we're then going to need to subtract the area of the right white region. And then now we would be left with the shaded region of your square. So I need to find the length and the width of my square. Well, the length of my uh, black square is going to be an x plus an x minus 1 plus an x plus 2. That would give me the whole length of this square. So I'm going to do that x plus an x minus 1 plus an x plus 2. Technically, I'm supposed to have parentheses around each of these polynomials. But we know that with addition, it does not matter because we can just add all these things together. I have an x plus an x plus another x. So I have a 3x. And a negative 1 plus a 2 is a plus 1. So the length of this uh, black square is a 3x plus 1. And since it's a square, that means my width is a 3x plus 1 as well. And since uh, my white region is a square as well, my length is an x minus 1, which means my width would also be an x minus 1. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to find the area of the large square. I'm just going to label my work as area of large. And to find the area of the large square, that's going to be a 3x plus a 1 times a 3x plus 1. So I have a binomial times a binomial. I can use the distributive property or the FOIL method. I'm going to use FOIL. So F stands for first terms. A 3x times a 3x is a 9x squared. Outer terms, 3x times a plus 1 is a plus 3x. Inner terms, a 1 plus a 3x is another plus 3x. And the last terms, a 1 times a 1 is a plus 1. I'm now going to combine like terms to get that the area of my large square is a 9x squared plus a 6x plus a 1. I'm going to write down units. I don't know what the units are, so I'm going to write down u squared or units squared. Same thing. Because area, your units are always squared. If, you're, if it was feet, it would be feet squared. Centimeters, it would be centimeters squared. That's what I mean by units squared. I'm going to save the area of that large square, and now I'm going to find the area of the small square separately. And I'm going to do that by doing my length, which is an x minus 1, times my width, which is also an x minus 1, and now I'm going to FOIL. x times an x is an x squared. x times a minus 1 is a minus 1x, or just a minus x. A negative 1 times an x is another minus x. And a negative 1 times a negative 1 is a plus 1. Combining like terms, I wind up with the area of my white square, the small square, being an x squared minus a 2x plus a 1. And that area is units squared. All right. So now I, I already went, went through this with you. To find the area of the shaded region, I want to take the area of my large square subtract the area of my small square. So area of, I'm going to call this the shaded region. I take the area of my large square. Minus the area of my small square. Notice how I put these in parentheses. That's important because I did not apply the distributive property yet. I want to subtract this whole second polynomial from my first polynomial. So I need that in parentheses because I'm going to need to apply the distributive property and distribute the minus sign into the second set of parentheses. Distributing that negative in, I have a 9x squared plus a 6x plus a 1 minus an x squared plus a 2x minus a 1. Combining like terms, a 9x squared minus an x squared, 
would give me an 8x squared, a negative six, or sorry, a plus 6x plus a 2x would be a plus 8x, and then a 1 minus a 1 cancels out. So this is my expression, and then I'm going to write my units as units squared. Again, if it was feet, it would be feet squared. This is the area of the shaded region. All right, moving on to number two. We have the measure of the perimeter of a right triangle. I'm going to draw myself a right triangle. Um, you may not know much about right triangles, but this is what a right triangle looks like. This little square represents that this is a right angle here. The perimeter of that triangle is 37s plus 42. It is known that the two legs of the triangle, when I'm talking about the legs, I'm talking about this side, which is 14s plus 16, and this side. The legs are connected to the right angle on your right triangle. And so we have two legs, we have the perimeter. We want to find the length of the third side. This is called the hypotenuse of our right triangle, the side that's across from your 90 degree angle. That's what that's called. But we want to find that side length. Perimeter is when you add up all the side lengths. So if I have the perimeter and I have two side lengths, then to find the third side length, what I need to do is I need to take my perimeter And I need to subtract my two side lengths. But since I'm doing subtraction of polynomials, or in this case, binomials, I do need to put um, these sides in parentheses. So with subtracting these two polynomials, I needed them in parentheses because the distributive property has not been applied yet. I need to distribute these minus signs in. So I have a 37s plus 42 minus a 14s minus a 16 minus a 10s minus a 20. That's when I distribute my minus signs in. Now I'm going to combine like terms. A 37s minus a 14s minus a 10s. I wind up with a 13s and a 42 minus a 16 minus a 20 is a plus six. This is the length of my third side, and I'm gonna put units on the end of it. That's my third side. All right, now they want us to find the area of the triangle using the formula area equals one half your base times your height. This is the area formula of a triangle. And when you're dealing with a right triangle, the legs, which we were given initially, are your base and your height of your right triangle. So to find the area, I'm going to do 1 half times one of my legs, which I'm going to do the 14s plus 16 first. It does not matter, though. Times my height, which is the other leg, so a 10s plus 20. And now I'm going to multiply these three things together. How I would multiply these things together is I first multiply the first two things. So a 1 half times a 14s plus 16. So a 1 half times a 14s is going to be a 7s. Even though I'm distributing, I'm going to keep this in parentheses. 1 half times a 16 is an 8. The reason why I'm keeping that in parentheses is because I still need to multiply all of that by this 10s plus 20. So now I have a binomial times a binomial. I'm going to FOIL. First terms, a 7s times a 10s is a 70s squared. Outer terms, a 7s times a 20 is going to be a plus 140s. Inner terms, a plus 8 times a 10s is a plus 80s. And last, a plus 8 times a 20 is a plus 160. And then now I'm gonna combine my like terms to get a 70s squared plus a 220s plus a 160. 
and this is area, so my units are squared. That is my area of this triangle fully simplified. All right, moving on to my last problem here. We're going to find the volume of the figure using the following formula. Volume for a rectangular prism is length times width times height. Now this is technically two rectangular prisms put together. We can either cut these into two rectangular prisms this way. So this is one and this is the second rectangular prism. Or I'm going to do it this way with you guys, but it does not matter. You would still get the same answer. So I'm going to call this rectangular prism one and this one rectangular prism two. For rectangular prism one, we do have the length, we have the width, we have the height. So I'm going to start off by finding the volume of rectangular prism one, which the length is the x plus three, the width is x plus two, the height is x minus six. So when we're multiplying three things by one another, we start off by first multiplying the first two things. And then the result of that, we will multiply by the last binomial. So foiling, an x times an x is an x squared. An x times a two is a plus two x. An x times a plus three is a plus three x. And a two times a three is a plus six. Combining like terms, I wind up with x squared plus a 5x plus a 6. That's the result of multiplying the first two binomials together. Now I need to take that result and multiply it by my last binomial. So I have a trinomial being multiplied by a binomial now. So I'm going to do an x squared times an x, which is an x cubed, an x squared times a minus 6, which is a minus 6x squared. Now I move on to the 5x. 5x times an x is a plus 5x squared, and a 5x times a minus 6 is a minus 30x. Now I move on to the last term in my trinomial. A 6 times an x is a plus 6x. A 6 times a minus 6 is a minus 36. So the volume of rectangular prism 1 is an x cubed minus an x squared minus a 24x minus a 36. And in this case, your units would be cubed. We'll come back to that. We're now going to find the volume of rectangular prism 2. I do have my length. I do have my width, and I do have my height. So the volume of rectangular prism 2 would be length times width times height. So multiplying my first two binomials together, I'm going to do this rather quickly. 5x times an x is a 5x squared. 5x times a plus 2 is a plus 10x. Um, negative 2 times an x is a negative 2x. Negative 2 times a negative 2 is a minus 4. Combining like terms, I get the trinomial 5x squared plus 8x minus 4. And that needs to be multiplied by the binomial of 2x plus 4. I'm going to have you try this on your own by pausing the video. Okay, this is the volume of figure two. Now we want to add the two volumes together. When adding polynomials, we don't need to distribute. We can just combine like terms. So we get an 11x cubed plus a 35x squared, a negative 24x plus a 24x cancels, and minus a 52 units cubed. 